Welcome to the fifth in the series of videos about AMR1 project. Hi, this is Alejandro Alonso, and in this video I will explain what a project management plan is, how to prepare it, and how to specifically apply to the AMR1 project. The project management plan is defined as the document that describes how the project will be executed, monitored, controlled, and closed. I would say that one of the most important keys to prepare a good project management plan is to understand why this document is needed and how it could really help the success of the project. We need to understand that in a project there might be many people involved and many phases to execute. So it is key to have a common point of understanding of the rules for the management of the project. So anyone could read them when it is needed. Rules could change, of course, but always under some kind of control. A project management plan could include many sections, but tailoring practices would be needed depending on the kind of the project and complexity, company cultures, and many other factors. Let's see some common sections using the AMR1 project as an example. So let's see here, uh, we have the project management plan for the AMR1 uh, one, version 1 1.x. As I explained uh, before, there were some requirements that apply to a version 1 and some apply to version 2. So this is the project management plan for version 1. And what is common to have that, uh, have here a scope baseline that is, is uh, really uh, provides the project and product definition. Usually what I include here are the product definition, um, so what, what the product will, will do, in this case autonomous mobile robot uh, prototype with useful feature for the real uh, industrial world. Uh, the approach, how am, am I going to apply that? But this is up to you, really. How are you going to do that? In my case, I explained that I will use a world breakdown structure and uh, this uh, level one, level two initiatives, what I explained in the previous video, okay, uh, the, about the functional requirements and so on. Uh, about the work breakdown structure, so I define uh, what will, will be this, this um, these different uh, initiatives, okay, features, and uh, the work packages, how am I going to manage the work packages, and the project scope statement. So all this part is, uh, includes the scope baseline, okay. Then we will go to the requirements management plan, that is, if I go here, the requirements management plan this all is inside the, the project management plan, okay, our sections, but all of them are plans, are not uh, only what, they include not only the plan for the project, but also how, how are we going to manage it. For example, the requirements here, uh, it is explained how they are named, like requirement page number, requirement number, version of the requirement, if it is mandatory or should have or could have. So an explanation on how you, you, you organize the requirements. So anyone that goes to the requirements could see that information, okay? Then uh, we talk about the project life cycle. Sometimes this is a long uh, statement, sometimes it's something short like, hey, we have the design, planning, development, validation, and closure, and some idea about that, okay? Then, the development approach, if we are going to use waterfall or an iterative, adaptive, or whatever a way we are going to use, we will use uh, an approach based on Scrum with some uh, additional um, ingredients from different techniques, okay? Then the, the schedule management plan that establish 
the criteria and activities for developing, monitoring and controlling the schedule. So how the schedule will go, what, what will happen when starting the project, when starting each of, each of the springs, during the spring, at the end of the spring or at the end of the project. Okay, so just to explain a bit like, hey, when you're going to start a project, celebrate a kickoff meeting. That, uh, it's typical to introduce the project to the, to the stakeholders. Uh, or, um, I don't know, have a release planning uh, where, you, where you have like create all the, all the all the activities that you will have is like typical when you start a project you need to say hey we have started the project these are the expected activities so you need to uh, meet the technical people and other people to start creating the, the the tasks we saw the work breakdown structure and from the work breakdown structure we end uh, splitting the different uh, epics in tasks okay and we could estimate when are we going to do that because we define the sprints and when the this different task will will happen okay um, then uh, so this is the the, the, uh, the release planning uh, personally I use Jira but you could use whatever you want uh, and I have this gun style plan because I like it okay I, I, it gives me more visibility than just having a, a, a backlog and having like, hey, what, what are we going to do in the next sprint? Uh, for me, this is like a very short time. And in, in this case, I could plan with many weeks uh, in advance. Okay, so I, I prefer using this, this mix between a waterfall and agile methodology, but always putting the effort on the, on the the agile part okay so um the same when starting a meeting uh, uh sprint sorry having the sprint planning the, the release planning and all the typical scrum process okay uh during the spring having the daily scrum um, so the typical things and at the end having a sprint review a spring retrospective and also i add a general project evaluation that is not part of the of the um, of the uh, of the Scrum methodology, but uh, I I like to have this kind of of report, and usually this is very interesting to to give to different stakeholders. Like, hey, in the general overview of the project, we are here, and these are the KPIs and so on. And at the end of the project, like the typical is summary uh, summary report. Okay. So, what about the schedule baseline? The schedule baseline is just working, as I explained here, on the different activities and try to plan somehow to have an idea on where are we going to, 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 to go, what are we going to do, when, and so on. Things will change, obviously, and we have to consider that, but we, we could have a, a general plan, a general idea, okay? Uh, it's like when you are tra uh, going through a through the, a territory and and you use a, a map. Maybe you could go to somewhere, but you do not know sometimes exactly where are you going. Okay, uh, so you go the the, the north where it is, but sometimes you have to adapt your your um, your way. So we could have this plan, and in fact, I added that here as a reference. But the schedule baseline basically uh, is, is organized with a tool. And then the cost management plan is very important because you could have this task but, uh, and, and you could assign people to these ta tasks, but how are you going to, to organize that? In my case, I organize that in, in, in hours. I measure that in hours the time and in, in, in euros or in any kind of... Uh, or um, a coin you could use uh, depending on your country, okay? So usually add a contingency reserve of, of 10%. It doesn't mean that uh, you are free to expand, uh, to have 10% more expenses. You have to justify that. But you need to understand that projects have changes and, and you need to, to, to take that in account.
Okay, um, the cost baseline is 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 just uh, to to add the the cost in the different activities that you could have or or your different um, epics. So you could have some some kind of of estimation on the on the cost that you have and have a baseline like your estimated cost and your estimated time for the different epics and activities okay this is something obvious and uh, when we have that and we could have a summary another part is to have the quality management plan in this case for this project it depends on your project the needs of your project in this project it will focus on the software quality like defining here okay how are we going to do that just with ensuring that a code in Python will, will follow the coding standards uh, PP8 and in C++ we'll use the Google C++ style guide and uh, for code quality analysis we will use SonarQ, the, the community edition that is a, a very interesting tool to, to do this kind of analysis um, and as an IDE I use Visual Studio Code that have extensions for different languages. For repository, we will use Bitbucket and um, all these uh, for work packages, it is considered done. It's important to define that the done concept when validation tests and documentation are performed for each, pa each package. Okay. Also, there is a resource management plan, the resources you are going to have. In this case, as I am going to work on, on this uh, AMR1 project alone, uh, this is just me, okay? So I will act as a project sponsor, project owner, scrum master, developer, and tester. So probably I will not fight against me too much, but um, probably I will approve everything. <laughs> Uh, just kidding okay but um, or uh, also you have to define here who is going to to do what role okay and the technical things that you will need for the project and something very very important is the communication management plan the communication management plan uh, states uh, what communication are you going to do when and to whom and if someone has to approve who prepared that okay so in this case is a project charter is something that is prior the project starts I like this uh, project charter just to explain show you a, uh, an example uh, project uh, charter is just a document that you define the project uh, definition you, you, you put the project definition the participants in the project you see I am the participant in all of them okay as I explained um, the overall project plan so you could say hey uh, this will be the milestones and uh, we will have these del deliverables or whatever uh, overall overall project risk we will talk about this a bit later but you have to explain what are the risks of the project the overall costs Okay, so this is a document that goes uh, for the project sponsor that should approve or not this. Um, you see, in my case, the approval is mine and the author, that's me, okay? So, but this kind of document is a summary that uh, gives you like the approval for, for the project. Okay, so let's see where we were. Um, we were in the... In the uh, uh, communication management plan okay later we will see the risk management plan procurement management plan and the change management plan so coming back to the communications you see like on the project start these are the communications need these documents and uh, the content like requirements obviously the project management plan like this document the risk register we will talk about this later the schedule baseline we talked about this before who is going to prepare that the project manager in this case who approves the project sponsor and who receives okay all the stakeholders will receive these documents it depends on your project on your company on everything okay after every sprint uh, the project manager uh, 
I know, and uh, in um, in Scrum methodology, there is not such project manager. There is, there is the the Scrum master. There's the and different other uh, responsibility roles, but not the project manager. But for my projects, there is always a project manager because this is not only a a software project. It's is 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 wider. So I I think it's important to have a project manager here. And uh, he prepares the, the status of the project, so he, he acts uh, like uh, writes the spring summary, uh, take care of the risk report, and, and after every sprint, explains about the the risks, the change log, uh, that are all the changes in the project that are important. I will explain later. The schedule forecast: if we are going to delay or not, how much, and the cost forecast the same. Okay. And it is important if, if, if uh, that this document goes to the project sponsor or the customer and uh, also the stakeholders are informed. I think this is quite important to have a good visibility on the project. And on the project uh, closure, the summary of the report as I explained before. The risk management plan is also something key to establish how the risk management activities will be structured and performed. So it explains how, how are we going to do this. Okay, uh, the first thing is to have a risk matrix, uh, but for that we need to evaluate uh, the scales. Okay, so we define scales like very low risk, low, medium, and the probability. So this will uh, happen if, if the probability is between 1 and 10, if the impact on objectives are uh, 1 to 3 days, or 1 week, or it depends on the project, or the cost will be less or more than whatever it depends really on your project okay uh, and after each sprint I, as i mentioned uh, there is a review using a sometimes a risk breakdown structure is like you you split the risks uh, using that that risk breakdown structure okay a risk breakdown structure is only a kind of document like this one where you say, okay, what kind of risk we'll, we will have? Uh, technical risk, management risk, external, corporate risks, market and client risks, and some other classifications like scope risk, requirement. This is something very typical. You could find that anywhere in, in the internet. And then it, 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 it is useful to review if you might have any risk on these areas okay it depends on your company so i define some risks and i explain okay this is the risk and the effect that i might have and i create a task for that so coming back to the project management plan and going directly to the um, to the risk management plan uh, when when you have that risk um, breakdown structure that i i mentioned you could create a risk matrix that is this okay this what is this uh, you could have here the probability like medium high or whatever it depends on on your project uh, and you could set what the risks are here like hey this risk uh, is quite a high probability risk of limited space for testing for example quite high but the consequence might be medium what means medium okay the consequence means that maybe we have a one to four weeks delay or or i don't know it could cost a bit more money or some impact in key functional areas i don't think like that okay so you could create that in my case, I, I use an extension of Jira um, in, in, the, in the big picture. Big picture is an extension of Jira. It's free for limited use and, and I could have this risk matrix. Now it's empty, okay? But uh, you could put here the different tasks, okay? And define your probabilities and your consequence. So this is what I used and uh, then I have like the list, this is the risk register, so this is a register of the different risks and uh, the risk probability, the risk consequence and the status, okay? So 
you need to do something to prevent these risks. So this, uh, there should be actions to uh, uh, prevent these risks in your, in your backlog. The pro procurement management plan is how are you going to buy things, who should approve, who is going to write the bill of materials, so things like that. Change management plan is something key because in a project there are changes constantly and you need to accept that. Um, you could not fight against changes. You need to review the changes if they come from, I would say, the customer or whatever, these changes, uh, change requirements, the customer should raise a change require, request and then uh, the project manager will write it down and so on. And it should be evaluated in terms of cost, impact, money, uh, uh, timing, things like that. Okay, And if the customer agrees, then uh, we might need to change the project okay but always should be registered so anyone knows what happens if this change is request never accept a change without this okay because uh, if you do not do any kind of analysis the expectations are uh, at stake I mean if the customer says hey why don't you change this part of the code or this other thing and you say hey okay I will check and and you do not say anything else the customer thinks that this is something simple but if you do this analysis and you say okay then you will have a delay on this other module or or whatever or it will cost this uh, other money or I will need additional resources and then you come back to the customer then the customer might say, ah, okay, then forget about that or how we could simplify that. This is really critically important. Otherwise, your cost could go up and up and the expectations could be really damaged. Okay. Uh, so uh, you could define like the general uh, change management plan and change in requirements. If there is any change in the requirements, who should approve that changes and so on or change cost by deviations from the baseline if uh, they are over whatever it, it depends on, on on you on your project if they are over 10 percent or not or whatever if this uh, is a, there should be a change request and approved by the customer or not but this is key for communication okay so this is uh, in general what a uh, project uh, management plan is and um, this is really a useful tool for anyone uh, so uh, expectations are clear rules are clear anyone knows what to do and if anything should be changed here in this project management plan okay maybe you need to do a, um, a change request depends on the change you're going to do here okay and uh, do whatever is needed to ensure that anyone knows everyone knows what is expected when how who is going to do what and all that kind of things are like the rules and is extremely useful never go to a project just with um, a project plan and things like that as I showed before no never go just with this okay never or with the cost go with a project management plan i hope this helped to understand what a project uh, management plan is and why is so important thank you if you like this video don't forget to like it and subscribe at the bottom of the video Click the bell to receive notifications when new videos are published.